So welcome guys again. Um, I've got my special guest, which is Alex Hazelton. And uh, Alex is a really good friend of mine and we've known each other for about 15 years. And Alex is not just a, a speaker, but he's also has written several books. And uh, um, he is just amazing, amazing guy. And maybe he can tell you how he, you can get some of his books. But anyhow, I wanna open the floor to Alex and allow Holy Spirit to operate through Alex again, like he did on our last message. And it was so good, uh, we decided to have him back again for this week. So uh, just uh, sit back, allow the Holy Spirit to just minister to you, experience what he's talking to you about. Don't just allow it to be words, but actually allow the presence of God to take you into what he's actually ministering to you about in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And um, we didn't even talk about that, but if, if anybody did want to order one of my books, I wrote a book called The Eternal Gospel of Jesus Christ, and uh, you can find that on Amazon. And uh, it's just, it's on there. It's just the price of the book. I've literally not even made five cents off the book because I just want to get stuff out there the best I can for, for people because I want to bless you. And so I'm just putting that out there for anybody that's like, you know, I want some more scripture. Mm -hmm. I want some more substantiation. I like this, but I just, I want to be convinced. If you just want some more, man, uh, it's, a, it's a nice weighty little book. It's got some mm -hmm. pictures, diagrams, different things in there just to help you get everything you need to understand it. Because the Bible says that when the seed is sown, if you don't have understanding, it doesn't remain. Mm -hmm. And you need roots, man. You need substantiation. It's a seed. It needs roots. It's got to go down deep by understanding a house is established. If you don't mm -hmm. have understanding, you're not established, and it doesn't belong to you, and it'll be like you never had any anointed teaching or any spiritual experiences. So I just encourage you guys, as y'all are hearing some of this stuff today, and you're saying, yes, praise God for it. The Bible says that uh, you have to take that seed and work with it. Meditation means to chew the cud like a sheep that gets all the energy out of their grass and their plants. So that it can fully work its way into their system and you need it this isn't just mm. stuff as we're talking i'm hearing this stuff and i'm not just saying oh yeah i know this already or he's saying something i'm saying yeah craner you know what i mean i already know all that i'm sitting here thinking mm. god make this reality in my heart yes. drive this down more and more because i know i'm going to get tested in this and i in that day i'm going to know what i believe it's not till you get tested till you don't know what you think you know till you get tested even the great yes. apostle paul said are they not weak and I'm not yeah. weak? Who yeah. doesn't stumble and I do not also burn with indignation? He says, in Asia, I perished even beyond my life. He, I mean, he, uh, he, he, he went through some stuff, man. And he mm -hmm. got to the, God will test you levels, not just one to 100, but 50, 75, till you get to the complete breaking point. And then other times where you don't even feel it. But trust me, you're not going to just stay at one of those places. God is mm -hmm. going to bring you to times of Bible says of refreshing in the presence of the Lord, but then as the suffering about of the suffering about so does the consolation. Mm -hmm. And then as the greater the revelation, the greater the thorn. And then the greater the thorn, the greater the revelation. It just goes on and on. So as we're sitting here talking about all this finished work stuff, I just I just want y'all to know that aspect of it. That's not our whole message. That's not Daniel's. I know you've mm -hmm. been through stuff. I've, if, you've, if you've been a Christian more longer than you know two weeks, you, you've already found out that all your trials didn't go away. The Bible yeah. says don't act like something strange is happening to you when you suffer. You're called to it. Mm -hmm. It's good for you. It asks the right questions. It makes you say, why do I believe that? Why did I just act that way? Mm -hmm. But it's not the final answer. It's not the final answer. It's there to ask the right questions of you so that you can find, uh, so that God can prove who he is to you. Mm. He tests you so that you can see what's really in there. The Bible says testing the faith that you might come by out, out like gold. He's done, the Bible says he doesn't just, he doesn't just you know, uh, burn it all day long for his own pleasure. He doesn't mm. just grind the clods of the dirt all day long for his pleasure. But he, he processes it for his purpose. He says that I might come forth like gold. Mm. And so what I want to say, having said all that, I, this is what I want to say. Colossians 2.19 says every member holds fast to the head of the body. Song of Solomon says in Song of Solomon 5.11, I think, his head is finest gold. Mm. Okay? In a great house there's many vessels, wood, clay, silver, and gold. If anyone purifies himself from the latter, he's a vessel of honor fit for the master's mm. use. 
okay? So you're purifying yourself. There is a processing, but like I just said, we're all gold. You've already got it. Lamentation says the sons of Zion are regarded as clay of the potter, even though they are fine gold. You are gold, my friend, impeccable, pristine. You know what I mean? Gold, clear as glass, the new Jerusalem. You're, you've got it. You're spotless. You're clean. But it's also a growing up and a formation of actually bringing that thing into space time. Because God doesn't want me just to make live. He wants me to have consciousness of that gold and he wants to try it by fire and remove dross or bad thinking or, you know, bad DNA because we're not really talking about uh, what you think we're talking about when we're talking about removing the bad stuff. When Lazarus came forth, that was the message. Awake, awake, go sleeper, rise from the dead. Christ will give you life. Wake up, Lazarus, come forth. It was a revealing. And even though he had the same old grave clothes or DNA and neural pathways in his brain, that wasn't the story. Paul says, to will is present within me, but how to perform I cannot good I cannot find. So the will of God is there. Yeah. Everybody wants to do the will of God. Yeah. That's what the Spirit is. Your Spirit wants to do the will. That's God's mm -hmm. secret. That's His principle. It's in there. But uh, the problem is, Paul said this thing called the law came. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, when the law came, uh, sin in me was revived. Now what is he talking about? Because how could he say, mm -hmm. he's talking about when he was a child. Most people would see something innocent in their children, would you not? Yeah. Okay? Through the matrix of your mother, he brought you, and you were fine. Everything was dormant. But once the law came, or the code of law came, he says, sin revived within me, meaning their parents' records, and I came to a place where I couldn't even perform what was good, and what was in me died. Mm. That's when he said he died was after the law. It wasn't from, it wasn't from the conception of God's seed in man. Can you all mm. hear that? And so we're in a place where he says this. He says, if I, if I want to do good, but it's not me, it's no longer I. It's not me. But the law of sin that's coded in the members of my flesh. Oh, wretched man, who will deliver me from this body of death? Mm. So I want you to hear this. Your spirit is good. Your soul is mostly good. The body is where the problem with this. That's sure, true. Undeveloped, sure. Your soul is yeah. undeveloped. But mostly good, because I want to tell you, if you left your body right now and you had a, a, an out-of-body experience, you'd be feeling great. All your senses would be open and dilated. But you come back in the body and you, you come back and you say, oh, man, that flesh starts kicking in. Get up. you got to make breakfast. you got to go do something for the kids. You, and, it start, and you're saying, hold it, hold it. You know what I mean? And isn't yeah. that how it happens? And yeah. so you're feeling the spirit there and it's starting mm -hmm. to drift away. And you were just fine because you were out of the body. Okay, if you die, you don't get a sozo on the way before you go to the Lord. You don't need that stuff. You're already in God. Okay, your spirit's healed. Your soul is healed. It's, it's undeveloped, sure, but the body's where the problem is. When you're in the body is where you have the, he calls it this body of death. And it's not even the body that has anything wrong with it. No one ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes as Christ does the church. That word is sarks. It's just talking about... A, a, a neutral type of principle. It's not mm -hmm. a bad thing that the flesh is. Nobody hates their flesh. He nourishes and cherishes it to transform it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Spirit informs the soul, that informs the body, that informs the outside world. That's the order. If I'm in the spirit, it's going to overshadow my body and it's going to change it. Mm -hmm. So practically speaking, I don't, I don't need to go back and find out every childhood thing, every trauma, every whatever that happened. Do y'all really think that that is... The point of all this, the Bible says you died in all or any generational thing that my parents have done. Because the thing is that what they've done, the Bible says if the sons aren't doing the same thing they're doing, they won't be judged. You say the fathers ate the sour grapes, their teeth are set on edge. He says, but I tell you, if the sons don't do what they do, they don't get the judgment. It's dormant. I know it's in there. It's in the record. It's science. It's all in there. But that principle does not activate if you're in the spirit. If I walk in the spirit, I'm not under the law. I don't have to do 10,000 court cases to do it. I don't have to petition it. I don't have to read a 100-page prayer, okay? When there's any breakthrough in those sessions, usually it's because somebody finally got to the end and they gave themselves permission to be free. And they said, they get to the part of confessing the blood and say, thank you, God, I'm free from all that stuff. Why do you think that they see... Um, these people healed over in Africa and overseas who've had 40 generations of witchcraft without doing any generational prayers, and they're just yeah. as happy as they can be, yeah. and they got the big white teeth, and you know what I mean? And they're just as free as they can be. They're free indeed, man. Yeah. They're free indeed, and it's because somebody gave them permission to be free. 
We're not, we're not building a tower to try to get into heaven. We're not on the outside looking in. The Bible gives a word of free indeed. You've already got this thing. He says you are complete. Let no man deceive you. You are whole in Christ. Everything he is, you are. Now, subjectively, I'm telling you, I know that DNA is in there. I, I understand in space time, it's right here. But Paul says, if I don't walk according to the law, it will not activate. And he says, in the spirit principle, we'll start to quicken that mortal body until it conforms it to his glorious body, yeah. which is going to transform all of creation and deliver it from its groan. Mm. Okay? So yeah. are we seeing some of the plot here? Yeah. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Is it okay? It's okay. Okay. Keep on going. Too intense? Uh, too no, no, okay. no, no. Okay. No, just explain it. Yeah, go, keep on going. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so according to a finished work gospel, before you've ever done anything, you've already been crucified, buried, and raised and seated with Christ. Everything was in him, it says, the fullness of God, and it was crucified, buried, and raised. It says, now we judge no man according to the flesh. Mm hmm but as a new creation in Christ, because we judge th thus that all men have died with him and been reconciled to God. So this is the story that you have, you are, you're not limited by the earthly birth. Stop looking at your birth. Stop looking at your childhood, trying to figure out, well, that's everything that went wrong. As the saying goes that I keep hearing people say uh, lately, they say, Jesus didn't come to improve you. He came to replace you, okay? Hmm. Christ Jesus is now your identity. Okay? You're in him. He's in you. That's it. You died. He's not trying to fix you up. He, you died. You were actually, he spit you out the other side of the cross. You're above the death line or the bloodline. And so my journey needs to be about discovering Jesus in me and not trying to fix that old man up in a new wardrobe. Forget yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Forget that. That's not the plot. It doesn't matter what your parents were involved in. You're in the order of Melchizedek. It says a man without father and mother, beginning of days or end of life. Okay, you've been born from above. What does any of that have to do with you? And I want to tell you the truth, whether something actually happened to you or if it's just imaginary, the devil can provoke you in a way where you feel like it just happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. So what's the point in really going back and hashing out that stuff? Because even after you've dealt with it, the devil can provoke you and you can start thinking about it and start to stir it up again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so stop rooting around in that old stuff. It's never going to set you free. And if you'll think back, of any deliverance that you've ever had, that was the key point where you got the breakthrough, where you finally started giving yourself permission to be free, to walk in the Spirit. The Bible tells me so. Mm -hmm. You walk in the Spirit, you're free. In Him is freedom. In Him is life and light abundance. And anything, in the light, anything on the outside looking in, even if it's an anointing that comes upon you, if it's still from an outside looking in principle, there's still a whole lot of things that aren't touching that anointing. Let, let, me, so, let, me interject, that sense? Let, me, let me interject something right here. Uh, many of you have come from this place of inner healing, and we do believe, Alex believes in inner healing, but you need, you, you need to go to God in this, what he's revealing to you is, is from a different angle, and it's from that place of sonship that you're already there. Once you have, have invited the Lord into your heart, you're already in that place of perfection in Christ because he's made you perfect. But when, when we have areas in our lives that are unsubmitted to the Lord, even as Christians, we have to bring those to the cross and die to those areas in order to truly bring the life and what you are right now into those places and giving yourself the, giving yourself the right and what Alex is saying, the right to be free. Um, say you have an addiction. Say you have something in your life that you're, you're walking, you're trying to walk with the Lord, and you have this area in your life that, you, that doesn't line up with, and it's in the flesh, not in the spirit man, but in the flesh, that it's not lined up with who you truly are. Now that area has to come under the submission to the Holy Spirit in James where it says confess your faults one to another. Alex is not saying that James is wrong here. Alex is saying that you've got to come up to another level to that other area to understand that you are perfect in Christ. We're wanting to bring that man that's perfect in Christ in your spirit man into your soulish realm. And that's where the conflict is and the battleground is the soulish realm 
that says you're not who you really are. And that's what Alex is talking about here. And I'll let you complete it on from there. Yeah. Well, no, that's, that's it. The greater includes the lesser. Yes. Right? He says, if you walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we don't turn on, we don't take buckets of darkness and throw them out of the room. You turn on the light, the darkness scatters. It's good, Dallas. God didn't even say, I, darkness, I don't like you. He says, let there be light. 10,000 lesser problems are solved. And that's the realm I'm trying to get you into. Some things are true, but other things are truer. Mm -hmm. And so when we, when we read Paul's gospel, he doesn't teach us the way that other people teach to get in the spirit. They're trying to teach you by discernment. Paul taught you by faith. That's good. Okay? Yeah, he says, exactly you right. are in the spirit if the spirit of Christ dwells in you. So number one, you don't, and he says, if you don't have the spirit of Christ, you're not his. So you don't get the Holy <laughs> Spirit on the day of Pentecost or you're, when you start speaking in tongues. You've already got it. Okay. Yeah. It just talks about it coming down to remind you that it doesn't originate from you. He says, in that day, you'll realize that I'm in you. He could tell the Pharisees, the kingdom of God is in you. They didn't even believe. Okay, it's in there. It's covered up. Sure, you, you know it is. He who dwells in darkness, how great is that darkness? But you turn to Christ, the veil is taken away, and the light that's in you starts to shine out through your life. So in this realm of light, how did I get there? By discerning it? No. <laughs> By hearing the word of faith and turning that I should be healed. Be healed. And yes. so now I've been knit back together in my consciousness into a place where I'm actually hooked up. He says, grafted into a vine where I'm actually in a place consciously to actually be the conduit to release it from that high realm where I've always been because I'm in God, right? To begin to release that consciously into this realm, okay? That's and good. so from that place, that's how I live. Not by discernment, meaning if I don't feel spiritual, I can't get in the spirit, <laughs> but by faith yeah. that says I'm already there. He says, you yeah. are in the spirit if Christ dwells in you. He already tells you you're there. Feel it or don't feel it. Emotions, no emotions. If you stay in it long enough, the man emotions will manifest. You'll get a yes when you had a no. If you had mm -hmm. depression, you'll get joy. You know what I mean? Everything will start to release with, within you. And you can do that anytime with no presumption whatsoever. You always have a place with boldness to begin to live out of that place. That's good, Alex. And so when I'm talking about a process, I'm not talking about becoming something. I'm not talking about digging up old memories in your past and you know, trying to, trying to find some, you know, weirdo guy to, you know, be your new spiritual father who takes you out to the ballpark to buy you a hot dog and a Coke and, a, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, or whatever, you know what I mean, kiss your daddy wounds and everything. But, like, to, to come to a place where we realize the Christ in you is in me. The Christ in me is the same thing. Don't call any man father. You have one father, it's God. You have one teacher, and it's Christ. You're the servant of all, but you have one master. One, 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 one spirit with the Lord, one husband. The real unity that we're looking for isn't in trying to um, build that tower to get into heaven. He says that's what made them all fight each other. And they're a little mm -hmm. further along to me, a little further on, uh, along than me. When I can see the Jesus in Daniel or in somebody else, even in an unbeliever, when I can look out and see that there, and the God in me honors the God in them, it forms an ark, and guess what's going to happen? It's going to manifest something. Mm -hmm. Something is going to happen. You vibrate the seed of God in you with the seed of God that's dormant in all things. It begins to align itself. And you can do that without any presumption because the Bible says he's all in and all. He's not just first. He's not just the center. He's everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're not just doing everything for Jesus and then saying, oh, yeah, I know about the Holy Spirit. Like, you're still speaking distance and delay. It's mm -hmm. not just doing it for Jesus, even if you're saying it's for the Spirit and, and whatever. It's, it's not just him at the center, like you're dancing around your campfire with your little spear, but you don't know what to do with anybody else, okay? <laughs> it's Jesus is everything. He really is. He's all and he's in all. He, his glory covers the earth like the waters and the sea. See, he sums up all things in his son, Ephesians 1.10. And so what I'm trying to get us into is to change the conversation where we're actually discovering what Jesus did hmm. objectively for all of humanity to get to a place where the God in me starts to honor the God in my whole environment, trees, rocks, stars. He's in all of those things. As I begin to do that, I begin to walk in an awareness and a value, a value for all of humanity. And I'm not going to mistreat the things I value. Mm. It's going to be easier to love people because I'm not just seeing them as dispensable, but I'm seeing the gold in them and I'm calling it forth and I'm relating to them consciously to that God part and I'm calling that forth. And watch how your results begin to change.
People are going to start living with one another without any shame or condemnation or blame shifting. We're going to be like in the garden, naked and unashamed, but all as yeah. one man. That's Together, good, being able to have real community. There's a real place for openness and honesty and relationships. Mm. And I'm not saying there's, there's not a place for that, but keeping it real with one another at the end of the day should become more like, hey, do you remember how blessed we are? You know what I mean? After yeah. everybody's laid it out and said, I'm going with this, that's okay. You can go through it, but let's remind ourselves how blessed we are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that, that, that's the truest part of who you are. You're already set up for this thing in success. You're, you're, you're healed and whole, spirit, soul, and body. You're already sitting at the finish line with your trophy in your hand, man. And regardless of how you move over into the next age, the Bible says the gifts of God are getting without repentance. Meaning once he gave it, he's not going to give it back. If he gave you all things, he's not, this thing just keeps going and going and going and going. He never stops. And I just want you to hear that about God. He, nobody's dispensable. You're not dispensable. He's not going to have any castaways. He finishes what he starts. He restores all things. And I just want you to hear that if you've never heard that before. Give yourself permission to get a new worldview. Give yourself permission to see something beautiful in your children. Believe for them throughout their mistakes. Believe for humanity, for presidents and kings throughout their mistakes. Don't just look at the trash, but begin to call forth that real treasure, man. And they're going to respond to you in a completely different way. And so I just, I just want to put that out there, if that's all right. Man, that was great. Yeah. yeah. Good, robust New Testament theology, man. This is New Covenant stuff. It's all over the Word, man, once you start to see it. Mm -hmm. It's just that we've read a lot of these old verses through the, through the old Pentecostal lens or just through an old evangelical type of lens where, you know, it's a guilt-driven evangelism or guilt-driven community type thing where everybody's just mm -hmm. rushing to get the job done. But we haven't actually got to hear the context within all these things are supposed to be taking place. Yeah. That there's something bigger than just a church insider, outsider type mentality. It's about humanity. He did something for all of humanity. He so loved the world that he gave himself for all of the cosmos. Colossians 1 says, thrones, principalities, dominions, all things, all things were in him. He has an invested interest in all of these things. And he's going to, everything that has a godly foundation is going to be restored. Amen. And so we're, we're just talking about worldview. We're talking about practical stuff. We're talking about, you know, Monday morning, so what? We're talking about what am I going to do when I'm homeschooling my kids and they're throwing up. And I'm just <laughs> telling you, keep yeah. reminding yourself of the truth. Keep reminding yourself who you are beyond your time, your season, or, you know, whether you might be more visible or more hidden. It doesn't really matter. This is a constant. It doesn't, doesn't change. Yeah. It doesn't change, and it's, there's, there's strong confidence for you, my friend. So I just lay that out there for you Amen. guys, if that's all right. Amen. It's good, Alex. Cool. Yeah. So you want to go ahead and lead the people? Yeah. Those yeah, that so, may not know the Lord, those that have walked away from the Lord, get both of them? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, just, I just speak of you what the Bible says. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things give thanks. And so I just declare over anybody who's struggling with any kind of anxiety today, uh, some things are true. Other things are definitely, definitely true. You can give thanks to God in the midst of all circumstances. Thanks mm -hmm. is an affirmation of something that's already been done for you. Even supplication is done with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tell you, when, as you're talking to God about things that are going in your, on in your life and certain things are going to come up and you're going to be starting to get tested in this message, I just want you to remember that word of thanks, that mm -hmm. word of affirmation. Of, of, of what God has done for you, that he's given it to you. He's never going to take it away. No matter how bad you mess up, no matter what kind of sin you might fall into in the, in, in, in the, in the days to come, there's no shame. There's no condemnation. There's, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that spirit person. And, you know, instead of kicking yourself and beating yourself up over and over, uh, just it's the faster that we can get to yes and amen, the faster all that stuff goes away. The Bible says the father ran out to meet the prodigal son when he was still a long way off. And That's he right. says, take away the, 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 the filthy garments and put the clean robe on them. Yeah. Okay? And he said, and do it quickly. God doesn't mm -hmm. want to see you like that. He doesn't want other people seeing you like that. He doesn't yeah. take pleasure in you and your shame and, and your sorrowful approach to the Lord. I just want to yeah. encourage you. The faster that you can get back into an affirmation of his righteousness, that's not disrespectful at all. It's his legacy. Teresa yeah. of Avila says, we pray God compliments by asking of big things. Your sin is not too big for God. Your anxiety is not too big for God. Your homeschooling, your kids, your, 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 your co-workers, whatever it is you're dealing with, mm -hmm. it's not too big for God, man. I just encourage you in the fullness of that message today to allow that just to work through every area of your life. 
And, um, and just, it's just to stick with it, give it, give it time, it'll bear good fruit. I, I just sense there's a, quite a few um, that, that are, are, are on with us about this, this message, and they have uh, had real issues with shame. Mm-hmm. And, and you, can, can you speak into that for just a minute? Yeah. Well, I, I heard a great quote recently from a brother named uh, Chris Blackaby, and, uh, who I really like, man, I enjoy it. And he says, uh, guilt is something you did wrong. Shame is something fundamentally wrong with you. Oh, that's good. And it's the difference between guilt and shame, man. And you might do something wrong, and the Holy Spirit will convict you of sin. But the Bible also says he longs to convict you of righteousness. Mm. And so he says, because the world does not believe. If we Mm. believed we were righteous, we wouldn't have a sin problem. The Holy Spirit's not obsessed with sin. He doesn't just want to keep pointing out stuff in your life. He's trying to reveal Jesus to you. Mm. And he says, if you'll do that, then it's going to work. Mm-hmm. Is that right? He says, I write these things that you should not sin. But if you do sin, you have an advocate whose blood will cleanse you from all All sin. sin. You you can actually live. He says, be perfect. Be holy as he's holy. Be perfect. Be complete. You know what I mean? Walk in the fullness of his stature. Over and over in the Bible, they're telling, be pure, be, be purified as he's pure. Like love as he loves. Like we're called to fully enter into that identity. But you just have to remember that from God's perspective, he has no sin consciousness. Even though he looks at it, he's involved in it. He's not reacting to it, and he's not—he's—he's—he's he's, he's not handled by it. It doesn't handle him. It doesn't manage him or dictate how he responds. He always responds the same way mm-hmm. to humanity because he decided from the four foundations of the earth to lay down his life as the shepherd for the sheep. That no matter what happened, he was going to be big enough to take all the blows, all the all the all the all the stuff that that was coming against humanity. Mm-hmm. He says, "I'm going to go ahead and take this myself." And so, honestly, can, if I could just say this, yes, when we start to identify with that side of God, not just from the helpless, I'm, I'm in sin side, but when I'm in the righteousness of God in Christ, and I actually rule over sin, not mm-hmm. just in my life, now I can begin to do it in your life. Paul says, I fill up yeah. in my flesh what's lacking in the sufferings of Christ. He says, one part lays down that another part would be built up. That's what he's talking about is the same concept that Jesus had as the sinless lamb laying down his life for, for humanity. If you move into that place with the Lamb of God, you can lay down your life for humanity and you can be the one starting to remove the shame. And so I'll just pray that. So we'll just pray. So Lord, I just want to say right now, John 10 says that you can begin to, that that there's one shepherd over the flock. Mm. And he says that he who believes will go in and out and find pasture. So right now, Father God, we just go in as a sheep and we're coming out as a shepherd. In Jesus' name, we're going in, we're casting the crown and we're picking it up and turning around and facing the earth and ruling it. So we go in you, Father God, laying down the crown. I just lay down all my responsibility. I'm dependent on you, Father God. I'm your sheep. I need you. I have nothing apart from you. And I move into this consciousness. I move into this attitude. I move into this place where there's only God and God alone and his righteousness and righteousness Mm -hmm. alone by his blood, not by my own works. And I stand in you now, Father God, by faith with confidence and I boast in you. And I say, thank you that I'm in you. Thank you that I'm clean. Thank you that I'm worthy. Thank Mm -hmm. you, God, that your spirit's my spirit. Thank you that it's done. Thank you that it's finished. Thank you, Lord, that everything you have is mine in Jesus' name. And so now I begin to turn around and begin to shepherd the earth. Mm -hmm. I begin to shepherd the earth like the Bible says. And I begin to, 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 just like Moses was a shepherd, David was, the shepherd boy became the shepherd king. Mm -hmm. Jacob was a shepherd. All these shepherds in the Bible, that's part of God's nature. Mm -hmm. And I just declare that part of my nature in that realm, I'm not just the prodigal son who ran away. I'm not the older brother working around the farm. I'm trying to grow up to be the father yeah, yeah. who's a, a source of blessing and who's taking the shame off the children. And so just mm-hmm. say it right now. I just want you to say this. I'm a father of many nations. I'm a father of many nations. Even if I don't see it. Even if I don't see it. It's true. It's true. Even before I have any children. Even before I have any if children. If you don't, I, I am a father of many nations. I'm a father of many nations. I sit high above the circle of the earth. I sit high above the circle of the earth. High above all things. High above all things. I've got it. I've got it. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. I'm complete. I'm complete. I'm light in the Lord. I'm light in the Lord. Whoa. And so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm in you. I'm in you. I'm fully 
identified in resurrection. I'm fully identified in resurrection. I'm a spirit. I'm spirit. We're one. Oh, we're one. In Jesus' in name. Jesus I'm in the resurrected body. I'm in the resurrected body. So in Jesus' name. So in Jesus' name. I command. I command. Resurrection life. Resurrection life. I'm a life-giving spirit. I'm a life-giving spirit. I release life. I release in life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Over everything. Over everything. Everything that's connected to me. Everything's connected to me. Just think as me. big as you can think, guys. There's no presumption in this because you're in God. Okay? You dwell under the shelter of the Most High. Don't, don't frame this up too small. Say, I'm in the Most High. I'm in the Most High. I stretch out my hand to bless. I stretch my, out my hand to bless. Do it like my dad does it. I do it like my dad does it. I release it now. I release it now. All power is mine. All power is mine. All authority. All authority. To trample. To trample. Snakes. Snakes. Scorpions. Scorpions. Bind strong men. Bind strong plunder men. Plunder the house. Plunder the house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' I name. I declare. I declare. Hornets go before me. Hornets go before me. Traveling in a pack. Traveling in a pack. Tear gas. Tear gas. Nerve gas. Nerve gas. SOCOMs. B-52s. <laughs> <laughs> rocket launchers. All things, all things are mine and I am Christ. And I am Christ. And Christ is God. And, and I command God. it like it actually it belongs like to it me. actually belongs to me. And I'm not wondering when it's going to be taken away. And I'm not wondering when it's going to be taken away. I command it now. I command it now. Bless my home. Bless my home. Bless my business. Bless my business. Bless my family. Bless my family. Bless Bless my sphere. Bless my sphere. I declare. I declare. Of all that God's given me. Of all that God's given me. I will lose none. I will lose none. I go after the sheep. I go after the sheep. Don't care what they did. Don't care what they did. That's their choice. That's their choice. I'm the shepherd. I'm the shepherd. In Jesus' In name. In Jesus' name. I grab the wolf. I grab the wolf. Grab the lion. Grab the lion. By the beard. By the beard. Even if it's a big one. Even if it's a big one. I grab them by the beard. I grab them by the beard. And I deal with the issue. And I deal with the issues. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name for the tent of the upright man for the tent of the upright shall man flourish shall flourish my wife is a vine that's fruitful my wife is a vine that's fruitful my children are arrows in the hand of a warrior my air my children are arrows in the hand of a warrior, a warrior. of a warrior I apply the resistance I apply the resistance I aim them and I aim them. I launch them in their destiny. And I launch them in their destiny. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Great shall be their peace. Great shall be their peace. They shall be taught of the Lord. They shall be taught of the Lord. I'm deciding that. I'm deciding that. Doesn't matter what anybody else on earth does. Doesn't matter what anyone else on earth does. I come up higher. I come up higher. Everything I'm connected with is going to come up higher. Everything that I'm connected with is going to come up higher. Even if it doesn't happen right away. Even if it doesn't happen right away. I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand. And I'm going to see it. I'm gonna see it, and it's gonna happen, and it's gonna happen. And momentum, and momentum brings momentum, brings momentum. Glory, glory to glory to glory. Mountain, mountain to mountain to mountain. I stretch out my I tent. I stretch out my tent. I don't spare. I don't spare. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' and name. And I cover the whole earth. And I cover the whole earth. And I set my time and space. And I can't set my time and space. In my divinity. In my divinity. In God. In God. And I bless the earth. And I bless the earth. I hold you in my heart. I hold you in my heart. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And I bring it back. And I bring it back. To my nation. To my nation. Hold it in my heart. And hold it in my heart. God bless you. God bless you. To my city. To my city. Hold it in my heart. And hold it in my heart. God bless you. God bless you. To my house. To my house. My neighborhood. My neighborhood. God bless you. God bless you. And to brood over my body. To brood over my body. Right here. Right here. I put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put it on the tent. I put on the tent of my spirit man. Of my spirit man. Brood over my body. Brood over my body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. And Amen. you guys are going to be feeling that all day if you were engaged yes. in that, man. That'll, that's the thing that'll stick with you. Your spirit man's always meant to be about right here, man. Uh, amen. He says, he says to put on the armor of light and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put so on. You're supposed to host this body with that spirit guy, man. And this body, if you engage it long enough, your face would actually start to glow. Amen. 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 Be transfigured by the renewing of your mind. Yes. That's what we're talking about here. Yes. By the mercies of God. It's not Amen. by works. It's by the mercies of the Lord. It's a free gift. You just have to really believe, is God that good to me? Right. Is he, did he really give me all things? If you're the son of God, if, 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 do you really have this thing? Yes. Are you in a privileged position to serve other people or not? Can you bring it from the highest realm to the lowest realm all the way? Not? Are you willing to take that journey and work it out even if you don't get it? And so I just, if y'all begin to do that every day, man, I promise it'll begin to shift your life dramatically. I know it has for mine and uh, it, it'll, it'll begin to stick with you, man. It's like just if you were to engage something bad for a few minutes, you know what I mean? Watch a horror movie or something. Pennywise is going to get me. You know what I mean? Like you're going to be looking around the house. It might even show up in your dreams. You know what I mean? Engage, we all believe that. 
Yeah. Yeah, something bad is going to come after you. Well, same thing with God. You engage God. He starts to come after you, and he starts the conversation, and he shows up in the dreams. And just Paul says, just like I used to be a slave of sin, and I have to try so hard to do right, guess what? I became a slave of righteousness. Yeah. Well, all I want to do is the right thing. I don't actually have to try to sin. It's nature, man. It's who That's you right. are. So I just, I just lay that out for you guys, man. Stick with it, man. It's yes. good. It's good. It'll be, bring big gains to your life. It will. Man. It good will. fruit. So. Well, guys, I think, I think our friend really did a great job here in delivering the word of the Lord. I, I just bless every one of you. The Lord bless you, keep you. May his face shine upon you as we already know he is. And every one of you have a great week. Bless you all in Jesus' name. Uh, if this message has been a blessing to you, if you have questions, uh, or, if you, or if there's been places where things are starting to uh, click in your understanding of who God is through these messages, I'm asking you to be bold enough to leave a comment. It'll bless not just you to release that, but also to release it, it'll, it'll bless others that are uh, looking into maybe what you say is going to be really blessing to them as well. So leave a comment, and until we see you next week, God bless you, keep you, may his face shine upon you, and give you peace. We'll see you next week. Amen. Amen.